folks, welcome back to Journeys of AI for Beginners. I am Pablo Lopez, Global Cloud Advocate in .NET and Artificial Intelligence here at Microsoft. You folks saw me twice already, right? So it's a pleasure to teach you folks again about Journeys of AI. And this time, let's pick a, co a more complex topic than the last times. First, so now I believe you folks know a lot about Journeys of AI. You folks know how to generate text. You folks know how to use images. You folks how to know a little bit of a little bit of fine tuning, uh, prompt design. You know a lot, and even use AI functions. Yeah. So now that we are coming to the end part of the series, I want to tell you a little bit about LLM mops, right? Because here's the thing: we talk about a lot of you no know, theoreticals, right? We talked about on how can you use the sports of all of your generative AI systems into new systems. But you know that's not always the case. You need to develop systems. You need to make them scale. You need to take care of a lot of this. So now you know how to use, you know, operations, how real operations work with LLMs and language systems. What we cover today? We're going to cover LLM Ops, LLM Lifecycle, Azure AI Tooling and Evaluation. Then what we're going to learn? We're going to understand the paradigm shift that happened between ML Ops and LLM Ops, the LLM Lifecycle, Tooling, Metrification, and Evaluation. Let's start very simple. Let's start before LLMs, right? Before LLMs became more mainstream. So we had a lot of ML ops, right, which is machine learning operations. So we had to worry a lot of machine learning operations to maintain our models in great shape. So we had a lot of, you know, very technical people dealing with constantly. You have, you have your data scientists. You have to have people that knew a lot of the machine learning itself to understand how these operations are going. So we had to have a lot of technical people as if I was not that accessible. And if you didn't, if you weren't a very technical person, you have a lot of difficulties to understand how to maintain a, you know, a two chain complete for, you know, machine learning operations. But then we had LLMs. And the cool part about LLM is that they simplified a lot of tasks that were really hard for machine learning operations, especially now with prompt engineering, a little bit of, you know, the rock pattern. So we have a bunch of new things that now you can learn that you can apply to your LLM ops. So if you don't know a little bit about uh, retrieved augmented generation, you're going to see on the next lessons. So... Let's talk about this paradigm shift. So let's start with the traditional ML ops. So we have a lot of ML engineers, data scientists, and what they show was about the model, the data, the environment, and we had only one metric, accuracy. And a lot of those machine learning models you have to build from scratch. Now we have LLM ops, and the good part about LLM ops is that now it's not just reserved for those ML engineers and data scientists. We have as well our app developers. So now everyone can join and trying to do a better AI solution for everyone. And the assets change. Of course, you still have model, data, etc. But now it's easier to manipulate. So have your LLMs, your agents, your plugins, your prompts, your chains, and your APIs. Remember when I said we said a lot about Azure AI? So that's the thing why I want to show you is to demonstrate how much now we can change more easily to have access to those AI solutions into your applications. And not only that, for metrics, now we have a lot more metrics. And you may ask why. It's because of AI ethics. Now with the power of those big language models, we need to worry a bunch more about how it's being used. So we have order quality, which is the same as accuracy, right? But have to worry a little bit about the similarity depending on our prompt. We have our biases, right? So we need to take care of the harm that it can take. So the bias and toxicity of the responses. It has to be honest. It has to be a some ground level to get correct information. So I need the groundness. And I need to take care of the cost and the latency. The cost being the token for request and the latency be the response time and response seconds or BS. So here I have as well on the, bar, the base of the ML models. You can see it's pre-built. 
It's fine-tuned to serve as API. It's a model as a service. That's why it's in AES. So you see here that now we're changing a lot of paradigms. Now even app developers can participate into a AI-enabled platform. And it's not only this, right? Because right now, the life cycle is changing a lot. Because you must remember that before this, now we need to understand, if you are an app developer, how to make an LM cycle in the real world. So what is going on here? We have here the classics, the base of all our AI-driven needs, which is the business need. Remember, all our solutions need a business reason to access. So we always need to get a business need to apply your AI solution. So after this, we're going to apply this into the ideating and exploring. So we need to do hypothesis, try to find new models and LLMs, or even SLMs, depending on the scope of your solution. Then we're going to try prompt engineering our way to get good accuracy. After this, we need to build and augment our solutions. So then we're going to do now a more advanced prompt engineering or fine tuning or even both. You can going to use evaluation to see if our solutions are scaling, giving right answers and understanding how it's performing under the tests to handle exceptions and have especially retrieval augmented generation, which is a pattern that is trying to get answers from documents that you insert. If you have any doubts about it, check our generative AI playlist that you're going to have an episode on retrieval augmented generation. So after this, imagine that all steps go through with building your solution. That's great. Now I need to operationalize. So basically, now you're going to apply the basics of all operations. So I need to take care of the quota and cost manager of your AI solutions and LLMs. You need to take care of the monitoring, the safe rollout the content filtering, and the deployment of this app or UI. So everything will be need to be operationalized to take care of everything that you need for your solution. So you see that you have three steps, and these steps can go forwards and backwards. Basically, you're going to advance projects, prepare apps for development, but if you want a new version, you can like revert to new ideations or new explorations, or even get back from feedback from the operations and building again into your new solution. Here you can see a more complex infographic of everything here we have. So we have here like to identify the business user case, to connect the data, build your prompt flow. If you have doubts what is prompt flow, I'm going to show very soon. Develop prompt flow real based on the prompt state capability to see if it's doing correct. And this is that the data that you have can work perfectly with the flows that you have. Then you're going to do testing. It's a lot of tests in the second part. So you have to run tests, evaluate if the prompt flow goes, and you can modify or not. After this, you, if you, everything goes well, you can always go forward. If not, you can go backwards, as always. Like You can go and deploy an endpoint. If not, try to modify a flow to gather yield better results. So after it got great results, you can always deploy your endpoint, add monitoring, and integrate it to your application. But I want some more examples. Do you Microsoft have some examples on having a whole flow? For sure. Let's take a look on it. So here we have a perfect sample. We already have Contoso Chat. Contoso Chat has a lot of the features that you're looking for. So here you have an LLM, which is easy deployed with Azure SCLI and has a lot of LLMs use cases. So if here you have a lot of the learn objectives. So if you want to understand RAG, you have to take a look here to build a run, evaluate, and deploy your RAG-based LLM app. So now we need to understand how you're going to evaluate, right? Because I talk a lot about testing. And testing with LLMs is usually a harder task than you usually know. So let's take a look on how we evaluate internally. So on Contoso Chat, we have this folder called eval. Take a look here. Then it can have a lot of IPython notebooks to see how it works. So here it is a non-Python notebook talking about how to evaluate groundness. So here you have a question, a customer ID, and an output. 
The customer ID here, it refers to a specific client. So then they're gonna use PF client, which is from Promptflow. Promptflow is our tool application to make flows easier. What is a flow, you may ask? A flow and prompt flow means that we know which process it goes from question to answer in which points of the code it touches. So what is retrieving? What is getting from the database? Um, which points of the code it is executing to get the correct answer? So here we have prompt flow here applied into code. So here it goes to the flow and then goes to the input. Then I get an output, and the good part is that prompt flow has a test. So you can get the question, the context, and the answer, and then I get to zero to five into the grading. Five being five the best, and zero the worst. Then not only it can try to evaluate on, on just groundness, it can evaluate on a lot of things. It can evaluate the question between all those points that I touch. It is harmful, it is grounded, it is correct. Remember, always, not always being rather to be correct. And if the answer makes sense, because yes, it can answer correctly. Imagine that I say, the guarantee is 60 days. However, imagine that 60 days is not guaranteed. Okay, it got the information correctly, but it wrote it wrong. So sometimes you need to take care on how it answers. Not only you need to pass the information, but it has to complement it and you need to take care if it's getting correct. And you can do a batch run to do a bunch of questions to try to understand if everything is run correct. So these are the some of the parts you can do, but if we have a lot more, please take a look on Contoso Chat on Azure Samples. And if you want more versions, we have more versions here on GitHub. So thank you so much for joining us in this new episode of Generative AI for Beginners. If you want to know more, you can always access our resources on Microsoft Learn. And not only that, we have talks just we had like this on Microsoft Ignite and Microsoft Build. Take a look on how we implement RAG solutions into this operations new world. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you soon. Mm -hmm.